Because the guy who approached me was pretty aggressive. It sounded like a bad idea. If someone comes to you and finds out you're a screenwriter and you know the industry and says, you know what, I do this other job in my life, but I have this screenplay that I wrote, I know it's amazing. How do I get it to the right person to get this made? I know this thing's amazing. There's no doubt about it. So just, do you know any names that I can just get this screenplay to so I can have it made? Is, is the question, do I have, know any names? Because the answer would be no. Uh, well, okay, <laughs> no. There, there you go. So that, that takes off that box. This exact thing, this happened to me at my sister's wedding. Oh, okay. Yeah, That's I, weird because I was thinking about it last night. What if someone came to you? My sister's wedding last year, it was near the end of the reception, and I, I had given a speech. I was the man of honor, yes. and it was, a, a I think, a, a decent speech, so a lot of people... Like, oh, do you, are you a co comedian? Or do you, I just, oh, I write screenplays, so I, I write a little bit. And um, like, oh, okay. And I think maybe it's other people had, had mentioned that. And so later, this guy who I had never met before in my life comes up to me and he says, I have a great screenplay. I think it's really, it's, it's perfect for, for you know, he, this audience and here. So, you know, what can we do with it? How funny. And I was literally thinking, like, what, what would happen if that, someone did that to you? Yeah, and you're sort of t <laughs> taken aback because um, it's funny because it's never happened to me here in L.A. where you think people would be talking about that more. And so I'm not even in that kind of mode. And near the very end of the reception, it's been, you know, a big, full, long day. And everyone's tired but still loose from all their drinks and everything and <laughs> this guy who i never met he's not part of my extended family or anyone i i could not figure out how he was there at the wedding because he approached me alone and he says i have this i have this screenplay he, he didn't have it but um he, he says i have a screenplay and it's i think it's fantastic and i think it's great and i what what can i do with it and i said well you should talk to anyone you know in the the film industry that you know well that might be able to do a favor for you. But I think the thing to remember in those types of situations, if you're the one approaching someone, is that it is a favor. So you should ask people that would be willing to stick their neck out for you because they know you. This man was a stranger to me and Reading a screenplay is a fair amount of work, even just from a time perspective. So even asking for that is a favor from a friend. And I, I didn't know that guy. And wow. so that wasn't something I felt comfortable doing because if I just accepted screenplays from every stranger that approached me, I would spend my life reading the screenplays of strangers. And so... Yeah, That's I would I would just say maybe make sure that you know who you're approaching if you're going to say I have a screenplay for you. That's really interesting because it was late at night and I, I posed this question to David and I said I wanted to ask you, uh -huh. David, that imagine someone came up to you. I, I envisioned it more at a restaurant and just said like, oh, hey, I do this for a living. I'm an accountant, whatever. Yeah. But I have a screenplay that I've written and I know it's fantastic. I know it's going to be awesome what's the next step to get this thing made? And so that was, I asked David his opinion, and he gave me this very long, interesting answer. I would never have thought of that answer, but I think it, it's a touchy thing, because Pete, and, and the last thing he ended was with, it's probably not ready to be made yet. Yeah, and I think, um, uh, depending on, on whether you use that answer or not, or you're able to use parts of it. Because it, he, because the guy who approached me was pretty aggressive. It sounded like a bad idea, and I was uncomfortable in the situation. So, I mean, that's all, all the context. I think if someone came up to me and they were sincere and respectful and was not doing it on the, the day of my sister's wedding, I, w I would probably give a different answer. So let me think about what I would... Uh, th that was kind of a, a, a bad version of someone approach. But if someone does that and they're they're genuinely they're, and the, if their question is what is my next step, th that I would I'd happily answer. Um, it's when someone it's 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 the fact that I was approached and 
they said, what, you know, can you do something ah, for so me? What can you do? Yeah. And I think that's, that's the big thing that, that really changes that conversation. If someone's asking for advice and they can ask respectfully and they say, I don't do this for a living. I am, like you said, an accountant or, or something else, but I have a really great screenplay idea. I would probably ask who else thinks it's a great idea. And if they don't have any answer to that other than themselves, I would say then you're not sure yet and you should give it to people to read. If, if other people are saying it's great, even if they're at first friends and family, then go to the next step and give it to other people. Look online for uh, you know, message boards and, and on Twitter, people are always trading scripts back and forth. Trade it with someone who has no stock in their personal relationship with you and is willing to tell you if it's great or not. And you can tell them, hey, I don't need any notes. I just want to know if this is good. And they can give you a one note reply of yes, I think it's good or no, I think it needs some work. And if you continually get people saying, yes, I think this is good, eventually it will find the hands of someone who can get it into the hands of someone who wants to do something with it. But I'd say for just recognize that everyone else working in Los Angeles and trying to work in Los Angeles and elsewhere in, within the industry also has a screenplay that they think is good. And they have written at least five times as many as you. Now you might have a unique perspective because you're not, if, if you are an accountant for a huge firm and you have some really interesting stories from that firm, you might have a good screenplay about that. Um, does that necessarily mean the screenplay you have written is a good screenplay about that? I'm not sure. But you have a perspective, but you just might not have the screenwriting craft. So you might wanna partner up with someone who does that you trust and it might take some time to build those relationships and to find those people. But screenwriting is not a hobby that usually turns into just a success. It might happen, but I think it's very rare. So if you have a screenplay that you think is good, there's a shot that it might go somewhere, but it might just exist as a really good screenplay for you. I think it's interesting too what you said. It's not so much don't approach somebody and say, what can you do for me? Do it from the what can I do to get it out there, not put the onus on you. Yeah, I think asking for advice, I'm always happy to, to talk about. And I think Whenever someone asks me for advice, I always end up asking a lot of questions because there is no one way to do anything in Hollywood. So it's always about kind of, well, how are you, where are you right now and what is the best possible avenue to achieve what you want to achieve? So I'll always end up just asking a lot of questions before figuring out what I would recommend. And that I'll end up talking forever because everyone loves to give advice. It's very flattering to be asked for advice. It's not very flattering to be asked to do something for someone. And so figuring out that which one of those conversations it's going to be, I think is on my end crucial to figuring out how much I want to really engage with this person or maybe shut it down before uh, the ask is coming down the line. I have a sort of uh, self policy of never uh, asking anyone to read my work in, in like social settings. I have friends that we have understandings with, hey, when you have something, can you send it to me for notes? And um, if you have something, I'll give you notes. Um, but that understanding already exists before I'm gonna send it to them. But if I'm meeting with someone for coffee to talk about my script and they haven't offered to read it, I will just not, ask them to read it. Now, maybe there are places and times that I could have done that and it would have been fine, but more often than not, I get asked, can I read your script? 
So I found that I don't actually need to ask. I can just have a genuine conversation with someone. And if they're interested, they will ask. And if they're not interested, then I would have been wasting my time and theirs to ask them to read it anyway. If, they, if I tell them kind of what my story's about and they want to read it, they're going to ask for it. You don't have to go around offering your screenplay. If you have a good idea and you say, hey, I have an idea for a screenplay, it's kind of about this, and I'm interested in it, I probably will ask for it. If they're interested and they have the bandwidth to read it, they will probably ask for it. If you ask them to read it, it already puts them a little bit on their heels because now it, it feels like an assignment and, well, I wasn't necessarily interested in it, so I don't know. Now I have to gauge, like, is it worth, in this conversation, having this little bit of tension where I have to now say, no, I, I don't want to read it right now, or I don't know, come back to me when you think it's ready. Um, you can usually get a sense from someone of how they're talking about it and where they might be both in their career as a screenwriter or in their, uh, their project itself, kind of where they are in the process and if it's something that you want to do. And if it is at a point where I'm interested in reading it, I would, I would ask for it. And I think that in most of my experiences, people have treated me the same. I rarely have to offer my work explicitly for someone to ask for it. And if someone doesn't ask for it, it probably wouldn't have been in their wheelhouse anyway. Yeah, and maybe it's also too like an, an industry protocol, like the unspoken sort of thing where maybe when people are new to LA or just to the world of screenwriting in general, it's just pitching whoever. But I've seen people at industry events just be just brutally aggressive and it's a turnoff. I've watched them with other people with producers and different things and well how do I get in contact with you oh well look I'm on the internet you can just look me up you know and they're just like hounding this person and I'm thinking I don't think this is working for them but I could be wrong but I think there's a there's just a way to do it and I think it takes time to know that, that that's really not the avenue yeah I think there's some people who have figured that out they're they're charming they're able to get in there and get people to read their work um, I am not one of those people and so I just once I stopped trying to figure out how to get people to read my work and just be a little bit more open and conversational about my work I ended up getting a lot more read requests from that because I think people felt like I'm not trying to sell them on anything I'm just talking and of the people that have read my work since then those relationships and conversations have all been better because it's all people who have reached out to, for, to me to read my work. So they're not, it wasn't something that was forced upon them. So it's naturally, I'm gonna have a better success rate, if that's what you wanna call it, of people that are resonating with what I'm doing. Yeah, and I think if people feel safe with boundaries and they, were, they see that you're not gonna just totally hound them about something, mm -hmm. I think they're more apt to be open to. Yeah, and I will say I've been that other person that is not getting read and I feel like I have to get something in someone's hands. And I mean, it's, it, it comes, uh, it feels desperate because it is a little bit desperate. And I've been in those desperate situations where I feel like I have not had any screenwriting traction for months and I totally sympathize with everyone that's in that situation and you everyone will I, I've done it I will probably do it again everyone's been there it's not it's something that we can I think work on but I think it's human to be desperate for validation but also for getting things going for your career Right. But if someone's in the restroom and you're like waiting outside trying to pitch them, I think maybe that's, <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying you're doing that, but I've heard of other people where that's happened. Yeah, I probably that's wouldn't wait outside a restroom. <laughs> I would not, in any situation, I would not advise that. Or they're at a dinner with family and, and I've, I've seen that as well. And someone approaches them and, you know, forgive me, I just need a moment of your time. And I, I think that's, that's, that's a real touchy thing to, to do that, you know. Yeah. And I think one of the things to do to avoid situations like that is to try and attend as many 
industry events as possible because people are going to be a lot more open in those situations because someone that is there is there to engage with that part of their life. Someone who is at dinner with family is not in a professional setting and they're not there to talk about your work. They're there to be with their family. So if you want to be in the situations where you can approach people and talk about what you're working on and meet people, then you need to be attending those events and not chasing people down in other areas of their lives. Right, because it could actually be a fantastic script and now you've lost that opportunity right. because the approach was wrong, so yeah. Right, mm -hmm. and I think also putting the relationship over your specific project is also something that's really important because you might have a great script and you make a really bad first impression and they're not gonna work, wanna work with you on that great script. But if you make a good first impression and your script isn't that great, but they really like you and they say, this one might not be for me, but keep in touch, it was really fun talking with you, then there might be something down the line when you do have a great script or you have a great script and it's just not something that they're interested in right now, but you make that bad first impression and you've burned that bridge. So a relationship is something that can pay dividends over time and also is just more honest and treats people as ends and not means. So always prioritize that over, I need you to read this right now. I need, I gotta get this made, it's so good.